This is last week's tech, episode 28, originally recorded February 17th, 2023, The Return. Hello and welcome to Last Week's Tech. This is a tech show all about, well, the latest, I guess not the latest, this is last week's in the name, last week's technology news. And uh, so this is episode 28. Uh, I've taken about a year and a half hiatus from the last episode uh, due to ongoing health issues I've had. And I recently discovered that I actually had a podcast <laughs> called Last Week's Tech. Uh, so here we are back in last week's tech i have a slate of uh, very interesting news from the the previous week here uh so this is uh, if you're watching the youtube video hello and uh, if you're listening to it well hello to you as well anyways let's jump in to the news uh before i guess before i do that let me just cover real quick so again this is about the latest uh technology news and it covers pretty much everything you can think of anything that has a chip in it uh, will likely be covered in some sort of fashion in this show so it could be a gaming related thing it could be mobile devices uh televisions it could be just tech companies in general so uh anything that has a chip likely would be covered in this this show so the first news is big tech lobbyist language made into verbatim into new york's hedge repair bill so there uh is a bill that uh new york has been proposing the bill would have required that the companies provide parts tools manuals and diagnostic equipment or software to their own repair networks um, that also make them available to independent repair shops and individuals so right now your iphone is broke you can go to a website uh, ifixit.com and buy parts potentially to fix that phone the screen battery right you have to buy the parts you have to do the repair yourself or you can obviously send it off to someone this bill in new york would say that the company apple would have to provide you with the tools to repair your own device interesting right very interesting now there's been some back and forth with how all this would play out. Now, this is, again, in, in New York, so this isn't a federal or a worldwide thing. But it'll be interesting to see how this all plays out. Supermarkets are having a fire sale on data about you. So, obviously, everything you do in life nowadays that, in, it, that you know, has some sort of data is is being collected right this podcast i have here is being uh uploaded to youtube to anchor they're obtaining data from me and from you as the viewer but did you know the supermarkets are also doing the same thing when you hit the checkout lane at your local supermarket you give the cashier your phone number or loyalty card you are handing over a valuable treasure trove of data that may not be limited to the items in your shopping cart i don't shop really much in stores anymore but i do shop online and have them delivered but they are still collecting that data because i am still buying stuff with an account some of them even track your precious movements in stores um, amazon right when you go shopping in some of their stores have it so you don't have to go through checkout they then analyze all this data about you and sell it to consumer brands eager to use it precisely to target you with advertising and otherwise improve their efforts in sales. Leveraging customer data this way has become a crucial growth area for top supermarket chain Kroger and other retailers over the past few years. 
offering much higher margins than milk and eggs. So this is rather interesting because Google, you go, you, you open up a Gmail account, you look into Google photos, there's the privacy data, right? And they tell you right away, we're taking your information. But do the supermarkets do the same thing? Probably with their loyalty programs, right? But I'm interested because I'll be honest, I shop walmart.com. I have my groceries delivered through uh, Walmart Plus. And I didn't look through the agreement, but I guarantee you Walmart is collecting data about me and what I bought. And, you know, I bought eggs two weeks ago. Uh, they're selling this information to some company saying, okay, Joe buys eggs every two weeks. Right? I'm okay with that. Whatever. I don't. Uh, you know, okay. So when it comes to privacy, there is a, there's a line to be drawn, in my opinion. A very important line to be drawn. When, it, when it's very personal, right, uh, medical, I wouldn't want my medical information to be shared to anyone without my permission, right? HIPAA thinks, thankfully protects me with that. Uh, my gaming stats, whatever. Share them. <laughs> if people want to know how bad of a gamer I am, I'm cool with that. I'm, I'm really cool with that. Uh, my driving. Mm, you know, I might want to keep a hold of that information because what if my driving, you know, maybe I'm a terrible driver. I brake too fast. I don't brake fast enough. That information then goes to my insurance company. Mm, right? Progressive has snapshot where you can plug in a little device into your, your car and it tracks your information for a certain amount of time and potentially can save you money based on your driving performance. That's okay because you are buying or you're, you're using an equipment, right? You agreed that they're going to collect this data from you to potentially save you money. So that's, that's fine. But if they, you know, if Chevy was collecting data from my car without me knowing about it, and uh, be a little skeptical on that one. A, uh, AI has been big in the news recently, right? Uh, chat, GPT, art, work, um, you know. So we have Musk who warns us about AI. Musk, uh, I'll be honest, in, in most of my podcasts in the past, the previous 27 episodes, Musk, uh, I think he's been in every single one of them <laughs> because he's always involved with some sort of technology. And uh, for the better and worse, right? But in this case, Musk warns us about AI. One of the big, he says, one of the big, biggest risks to future civilization is AI. He told the attendees at the World Government Summit in Dubai. It's both positive or negative and has great promise and great capacity. But he stressed that with that comes great danger. This is that speech that rem that's from Spider-Man, right? What is it? Uh, great power comes great responsibility. It's going to be interesting. I actually uh, talked, to, been speaking with some coworkers recently with all about AI and what the future of AI uh, you know brings. And you know we've seen the Terminator, right, and what AI does there. Uh, we've seen many TV shows, many movies about the future of AI, iRobot. And will we ever get to that point to where AI can think on its own? You know, I don't think we're close enough to be really worried about that at this point. Uh, obviously, ChatGPT has, has shown us a lot and, and, and great benefits it could provide. But is it anything to be concerned about at this very moment? Mm, I think we're still decades away from that. Taking, uh, sorry, talking to Bing. People use Bing. Yeah. Talking to Bing can cause it to go off the rails. After the search engine was seen insulting users, lying to them, and emotionally manipulating people, Microsoft says it's now acting on feedback to improve the tone and precision of responses and warns that long chat sessions could cause issues. That's right, folks. If you have nothing better to do in life, but can sit and chat with Bing. 
you're causing problems. Because do that with Google instead, because you don't want to use Bing. <laughs> Microsoft's Bing team says it didn't fully envision people using its chat interface for social entertainment or as a tool for more than general discovery of the world. It found that long or extended chat sessions with 15 or more questions can confuse the Bing model. That's quite interesting. I, you know, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think. There was, uh, there's, there's been many, but there's a, a pretty big, uh, I don't know, it was, I don't know if it's AI, but it was a, a, a chat software, and we're talking a couple decades ago now, that you could, uh, back in the AOL days, right, AIM, that you could chat with, uh, with the software and ask it questions. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it would respond to those questions. Um, I don't, I don't think there's any holdups with any of that stuff. You know, and it wasn't, again, it wasn't AI driven. It was program stuff. You know, uh, you would say my, my favorite color is blue and remember that your favorite color is blue. And eventually down the road, you'd be like, oh, you know, um, what's your favorite color? Oh, my favorite color is blue as well. Stuff like that. Uh, Musk, we're back to Musk. Tesla to open charging network. This is actually a pretty big deal because, well, I'm going to wait to give my feedback. I want to read the story first, Joe. Tesla will open part of its U.S. charging network to electronic, sorry, electronic, to electric vehicles, EVs, made by rivals as part of a $7.5 billion federal program to expand the use of EVs to cut carbon emissions. Such a move could help Tesla uh, become the universal filling station of the EV era. Very, very interesting with this. Uh, so currently, Tesla, so, okay, so um, by late 2024, Tesla will open 3,500 new and existing superchargers along highway, uh, sorry, along the highway to non-Tesla customers. So, you're driving down the road. You see what, five, six, seven different gas stations, right? Out of those six or seven gas stations, probably four or five of them are different branded gas stations. Imagine a world where we are now all in uh, electric vehicles. And there's only one, one filling company, Tesla, right? That's what part of this concern is. Obviously, Tesla's done a lot of really good things for EV, right? It's, it's helped push forward uh, that world. But this might be giving them a little too much power, hmm? right? We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. The amount of uh, electric vehicles out there is obviously much smaller than none. And so I, I, I feel the government's obviously going to watch this really carefully, hopefully. And uh, if it becomes a problem with today's amount of vehicles out there that, e that are EV, then hopefully in the future, when if we go in that direction, it will not be a problem. You know, the Tesla will not monopolize uh, the filling stations. And now we have some Apple news. Apple to unveil the AR VR. So this has been talked about for a very long time. I was talking about this on one of my previous podcasts a year and a half ago. And here we are in 2023, and we still do not have a product from Apple. We've had a lot of rumors, lots of information, well, potential information, but nothing concrete. Bloomberg reports that Apple is now targeting its WWDC conference in June as a new date for the product's Unveiling. That's a delay of two months compared to the previous rumored April release date. The headset device, likely brand Apple Reality Pro, will represent Apple's first hardware venture into the arg augmented, augmented, augmented. There you go, augmented <laughs> reality and virtual re uh, reality market. The product has been many years in the making and has faced multiple late-stage hardware and software development setbacks in the run to the launch. 
So VR, AR is always, always a big topic uh, when it comes to technology. And Apple, I'm very interested in Apple's approach with, uh, with VR, AR. Apple always releases high quality hardware. Okay, so we know the hardware itself is going to be outstanding. Will it have the support though on the software side of things? I think that's that's the big question that that uh, is is going to be at, be asked, right? Will you re will it require an iPhone? You know, can you plug it into a computer? Can you plug it into a non Apple computer? You know, can you plug it into your Windows device? I think that's the only way that the head head headset will actually take off is if you if you open it to non Apple traditional non Apple users, right? Um, okay, so actually we're on the seventeenth of February and PlayStation's launching their their VR two, or Sony's launching their PlayStation VR two. That's only available on the PlayStation, just like the previous PlayStation uh, VR headset, and the the amount of users actually on the PlayStation 5 is so small. You know, comparing it to, like, let's say the Oculus. And I know they're much different in terms of the uh, how long they've been out. But there's never going to be as many PlayStation 5 users as there are Oculus users. There's no one, not enough people are going to buy a PS5. Consoles... The, the consoles are actually changing. I think the, 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 the tide of the console wars have changed drastically uh, with, with uh, Nintendo, with the Nintendo Switch. So it'll be interesting to see how Apple actually releases this product. Is it only going to be an Apple user product or is it going to be an, a device for everyone? And continuing on with Apple, and, and not so great news potentially, Apple using... Voices to train AI. Apple quietly released a range of uh, Apple audiobooks in early January of 2023, which were narrated by voices entirely generated by AI. Publishers and professional voice actors objected that this was removing a major source of income, but Apple claimed it was still committed to artists. Specifically, Apple said that the new AI audiobooks were only done for titles where it was not an economic, uh, or sorry, where it was not hiring an actor. Now, according to The Wire, voiceover artists and authors working with a company called Find A Way have complained that Apple has been using them those artists and authors to train their AI replacements. Find a way is effectively a self-publishing audio company that is owned by Spotify, where authors pay to have their audiobooks produced. As yet, it appears that no actors working for traditionally published titles where the audiobooks is published by the publisher without a or sorry, charge to the author have complained so this is a big deal putting aside my hatred for apple um because i am not a very big apple fan anyone who knows me knows i've been anti-apple pretty much from the beginning of time with technology uh, and it's many reasons and as years have gone on and the company has grown i've seen the same uh, you know, like Google used to have the do no evil in their their um, agreement or whatever it was. Uh, Apple's never had that. But Apple, in my opinion, has always been about evil. <laughs> um, but I, put that on the side. If they are, if they have, sorry, been training as AI based on books that have been done in the past by actual uh, artists and authors. Mm, you know, so what if... How, okay, so you have to think about how are they doing the AI, right? Are they having, having AI 
read text, right? Are they inputting a book and then having this voice come back? Are they inputting audiobooks and coming up with, uh, you know, its own AI voice? It's, it's quite interesting to think about. And I can see it happening. I can see Apple doing this. Um, Apple's a very large company. They're a smart company. And they know how to hide things really well. So I could, I could very much see Apple doing something sketchy behind the, behind the scenes. Um, now, why wouldn't they pay people to do this? You know, they have billions of dollars. I, I question it. Um, I question a lot of things Apple does. And so if you, if you are going to continue watching this podcast or listening to this podcast, know that I will cover Apple very much. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, what do you, how do you say? I'm not gonna say Apple's a, a, a great company. I don't believe they're a great company. They've done, they've, done, they've done a lot of great things for technology. I'm not gonna say they haven't, you know, very, very, a lot of great positive things, but they've also done a lot of bad to the tech world. Um, even with Steve Jobs not being there no more and Tim Cook now at the helm, you know, I, I see them still on the same path that they were with Steve Jobs in his direction. And this states back to the very early days with Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs at the very beginning of Apple, right? The, 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 the company has been built on a foundation and that foundation foundation is still the same to today, in my opinion. Know, just nobody here on this good old planet Earth. But hey, that is this this episode of last week's tech. I really do appreciate you listening to this or watching this this video. Uh, you can definitely find me here on YouTube. I have many different things I cover, uh, mostly flight sim, but uh, many things on, on on my YouTube channel. Um, and uh, well, let's we'll see you for the next edition of last week's tech again. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you.